votes have been tabulated, the arguments have been won and lost, and now we have the 2014 Ward's 10 Best Interiors list. Uh, so we're going to talk about the uh, 10 winners, also talk about some of the losers that were in the competition. Uh, we've got Dave Zoya, uh, Christy Swinesburg, and also Byron Pope here to talk about it. There were eight editors in all who were doing the, the uh, selection, uh, but uh, the other four can't make it. So it's going to be us four, and uh, we're going to talk about some of the criteria that are applied to the, uh, you know, to the selection process. We're looking at material quality. We're looking at fit and finish. We're looking at the driver information system. How well does the HMI, uh, you know, how well can you navigate through all the systems of the vehicle? Uh, and then, of course, the design aesthetics and safety and value and comfort, comfort and all those things tie in. So, and we are going to go in alphabetical order because our listing does not uh, have any rankings from number one to ten. The number ten vehicle is just as good as the number one vehicle. Some people think that we have an actual ranking that the number ten is not as good as the number one, but we go by alphabetical order for a reason, and that's because they all have equal weight. So. First up is the uh, Chevrolet Corvette. This is the uh, seventh generation coupe. A um, lot of fun to drive. We all uh, we all enjoyed it. It has a it has a wonderful sound inside because of that uh, you know that small block V8 engine. Uh, but also, we really paid attention to the materials in the Corvette this year. And uh, lovely black leather with contrast white stitching. Um, and the materials overall are just very premium, very high end. Um, the light that you get on the inside of the vehicle, it's all basically coming off of this, uh, you know, off the instrument panel. The dashboard and also, um, you know, the, the, the uh, central display, which is high definition, it's bright, and, uh, you know, the instrumentation right in front of the driver, uh, really bold, um, you know, the, 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 um, the letters are kind of slanted like in italics as if to, you know, kind of suggest the urgency, uh, you know, when driving this vehicle, so um, I just really enjoyed the vet, and I think uh, I think everybody liked it. Did well, I think it's just it's such a huge step up from where Corvettes have been in the past. It's yeah. uh, they've always been criticized for having poor interiors with uh, GM parts bins parts yep. scattered throughout. So they actually made a you know an effort this time to uh, address the shortcomings of the interior. Exactly, I noticed. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I scored it very closely with the Jaguar F-Type, which was priced $30,000 higher than the Corvette that won. Uh, but, you know, you could see the similarities between those two interiors. And to think that a Corvette could compete with a Jaguar in terms of, you know, kind of the luxury appointments on the inside, that's really saying a lot. And also the Corvette definitely goes to bat against the, you know, the Porsche 911 um, more so than it has in the past, just based on some of the interior appointments. Of course, the performance has always been been there up against the 911, but now the interior is there as well. I really so. like the ergonomics of the push button instead of the, the door handle, because yep. um, that's a big old door, and it's much easier just to go right to the door armrest to get it open than, Absolutely. than pulling that lever. Yeah, and, yep. and then to Byron, your point about the, you know, the quality of the interior, um, my test for the Corvette for many years has been torque off of the steering wheel and see how the back seat flex, or, you know, see how the seat back flexes, and you do that with this new interior, and that seat is just locked in there. I mean, that that seat feels really firm and very supportive, and really gives you the confidence to handle a 460 horsepower car. So, we're going to move on to the Chrysler 200C. Um, this, of course, is the is the 2015 model, all new. Um, the vehicle that we tested uh, came in at 31,470. Um, very nice, nice appointment. Reminded me a lot of the 300 uh, that we actually put on our list a number of years ago. Uh, just really upscale. So, Byron, what do you think about it? Um, I think it's a, just like the Corvette, a dramatic uh, upgrade from the outgoing model. I, I, you could just tell it's a lot of quality, a lot of thought was put into it, attention to detail. Um, it seems like an interior that came out of a much more expensive car, mm -hmm. I felt. Um, especially we had like cream colored leather seats with like a dark brown kind of piping it just it looked classy um, you know and like Drew had mentioned that the rotary gear shift in the center opens up a lot of real estate so you know they just seems like a little more airy a lot of storage space um, one of the attention to details is like little things like underneath the pass through there's a storage space right underneath the gear shift and that's where they have a mat with the skyline of Detroit mm -hmm. so it was a nice little touches like that that 
you know, not, I mean, everybody would, you know, want to pay extra money for it, but it's a nice surprise and delight kind of feature. Uh, a lot of dr driver assist technology. Um, not only did it, ha it had vertical and horizontal parking assist, mm -hmm. which, as far as I know, is one of the first vehicles to have that. And, and you know, a technology that wasn't on a lot of more expensive cars that we've tested this year. So overall, I think that, you know, Chrysler's finally getting serious about the 200, and yeah. the interior is one way it shows. They also made a big point about the wood on the instrument panel that stretches all the way from the A-pillar across and over top of the center stack, and that piece is about, what did they say, two and a half feet wide, and it's all one piece of wood, which I didn't realize it was such a big deal to accomplish that. It's all veneer, and it's matte finish, and it's, it's beautiful wood, and it stands out from the, you know, from the surface of the instrument panel by about a quarter of an inch. Um, but so apparently that's a big engineering achievement to have that, and, and it does definitely set off the whole interior as well. I like the matte finish in general, but especially in that, in that interior, it really does pop. I think the harmony of the interior and the, the color schemes and the blending, I think that's what Chrysler is doing really well these days. Yep. You know, just about any vehicle we got into from them for this test, I thought it had real nice color schemes and aesthetic to it, and I, I think it showed up in the in the 200 as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and then the back seat in terms of space in the back seat, Klaus Busa, who's you know, the chief chief designer for interiors at Chrysler, he's six foot seven, and he climbed right into the back seat with no problem. He even got into the center seat in the back. And, uh, and and wasn't pinched too badly by the ceiling. Uh, so, I mean, they've taken a you know, reasonably small package and made it very spacious. So, as we move on now to the, to the next vehicle, the uh, GMC Sierra Denali, which, uh, of course, is a platform mate with the, uh, the uh, Chevy Silverado. Uh, we like the, the uh, Sierra Denali better than the uh, Silverado, um, partly because it just feels more premium. And, um, a lot of really nice appointments, um, you know, in, in the uh, Sierra Denali. Um, there's a real business-like feel inside that truck. It, it, it seemed like the, the, the colors are, are, are fairly uh, subdued. It's not like, uh, you know, the, the Ram Laramie Longhorn that we had in here last year that won with all of the brown saddle leather and the filigree and the saddle bags and stuff. There's none of that in this truck, and it, and it still works really nicely. The, the materials are quite premium, and of course the features are nice, and, and I'm glad that we had it here during the uh, Polar Vortex because with the heated steering wheel and the, and the heated seats, and, uh, and boy, that, that cabin is really buttoned up tight. I mean, it, you don't hear wind noise, you don't hear anything in, in that cabin. Yeah. Also, also a business feature is that big uh, center console yeah. Yeah, box. I think you can put hanging files in there, so if you're... It's massive. On the go, a construction <coughs> foreman or something like that. Everything can come with you. You can put a computer in there. You can put a lunch box, a cooler, mm -hmm. whatever you want in there. It is enormous. Yeah. Very, uh, very flexible interior, I thought. And you know, I, I love how the back seats fold up, which, which is not necessarily a new feature, but just the idea of being able to fold up that that second row seat so that you could, you, know, you could put a bike in there, or you can put fairly large equipment in there as well. So very nice. Uh, as we move on to the list, we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to talk about the, uh, the Hyundai Equus Ultimate. Uh, that's stickered at sixty-eight thousand nine twenty, uh, and this, of course, is the flagship for Hyundai. We had some really nice Hyundai slash Kia um, you know, interiors in the competition this year. Um, in addition to Equus, we had the Genesis, we had the Kia Cadenza, we had the Kia K nine hundred. Those all seemed really quite nice, but for some reason, the Equus was just better than the others. Dave, what would you think about it? But this is one of the vehicles that, as soon as I got in, I knew it was a contender. You know, you just, you get in there and everything just seems to flow nicely. Uh, um, a real nice mix of, of different uh, upscale materials. The, the, the wood was striking. The, uh, the seats with the, the ivory seats and the leather was, was very striking. And then it works for it really well, I thought. You know, the uh, controller, uh, the center controller works well. You don't have a touchscreen issues, um, big buttons and things like the, the HVAC system. So, you know, it just seems like, you know, at that price point, it, it's uh, really an, an amazing vehicle because it really competes with stuff that's twice the price. And a lot of the control, you know, the controller in the center console in front was almost a mirror image of the center console in the back. So if you're sitting in the back and um, you have all sorts of uh, functionality back there, of course, the ability to recline the, the the back seat and also push forward if you're in the passenger side of the you know of the back seat 
you can push forward the uh, front passenger seat and have it lean forward so that you, you know, feel like you have this massive cavern all to yourself. It's kind of cool. Yeah, the back seat's amazing. Yeah, I, I also love the color scheme. That ivory is, is maybe not durable, but right. certainly looks good. It's going to be durable in a car like that because it's, you know, anybody getting in and out of a car like that is going to be <laughs> wearing business suits and you know, two-year lease. Yeah, yeah two-year <laughs> lease. Yeah, exactly. Very nice. Uh, and then moving on to the uh, Jeep Cherokee Limited uh, sticker price of thirty-seven five twenty-five. Um, this was the only CUV that we had on the list. Um, very flexible, very nice. Uh, as I drove it, I was thinking, man, is this really right for the Rubicon Trail? Because it's really upscale. It, the 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 uh, Leather was blue and brown, which you would think wouldn't work, but it really does. It's very distinctive. Uh, those colors carry over across the instrument panel. And, um, and of course, um, some of the things that, that were in the 200C also carry into the Jeep in terms of the, the HMI, the central display screen, which really works well. And, if, you know, of course, uh, Maserati then carried some of that into their vehicles, which we tested this year. Uh, but, yeah, overall, the Jeep is just, uh, you know, really well done did you well this is another one i thought you know when, when you get in what you said uh, about the price i mean the first thing you do is you check the price because yeah. it, it seems way more expensive than it is and then it has brand character i mean i think out of any of the interiors that we evaluate this is one of them that you get in and say yeah this says jeep you know and so yeah. it, i think it really sold the vehicle for me was was the interior of it. it says new jeep right it doesn't say old jeep from right. 1941 from the war years <laughs> it, okay. it, it's you know it's a reflection of the new jeep grand cherokee you know it's like a mini version of the grand cherokee which is which is fairly impressive um so then you wonder like what does the next generation wrangler look like you know i mean if they're taking these interiors upscale to that point there there has to be a point at which they say that the wrangler has to has to look more like it is suited for the you know for the rubicon trail but, uh, I, I really love their HMI. The buttons on the back of the steering wheel are yeah. so user-friendly, and I like how they put that little ledge at the bottom of the touch screen so you have like a place to rest your hand so you're not like bouncing nice. all over the place when you're trying to touch something. And yeah, the infotainment nice. system, I think, there is, is one of the best. Yeah. You connect. It's mm -hmm. just Absolutely. very easy to use, very intuitive. The phone syncs up quickly. The voice recognition system worked well. It seemed like a lot of the, the vehicles that we tested had some really great voice recognition mm -hmm. software. Yeah. And we've profiled the first five 10 best interiors. We're going to do a second segment on the next five. So be sure to tune in. Thanks.